there is something really interesting that caught your uh, eye when you first saw them. Could, could you could you explain this a little bit? What's that that we can see there, and why is it interesting? Right. So the the very first high resolution images that we took were not pointing anywhere specifically. We we are seeing a small disk part of the solar disk here of the corona which we essentially call the quiet corona. Uh, quiet meaning that nothing is supposed to happen here. But then when you look at it at high resolution, it's amazing in the smallest details how much stuff is going on there. Uh, we couldn't believe this when, when we first saw this. And we started giving it crazy names like uh, campfires and, and dark fibrils and, and, and ghosts and whatever we saw. Uh, so, so there is so much new small phenomena going off on on the smaller scale that we are like starting a new vocabulary to give it all names. And uh, many of those things have, have been seen before uh, at bigger scales, but never at these small scales in, in the quiet corona. Uh, thank you. Danielle, uh, what do solar scientists know about these little campfires, these little phenomena? And, uh, how much have, has been known, how much have they been observed before? Well, Teresa, like uh, David was saying, to our knowledge, many of these particular features have not been observed before at this scale. Uh, these are clearly just the first test images, so it's too early to draw any scientific conclusions. But our conjecture is that these campfires and, and ghosts are related to changes in the sun's magnetic field, uh, a process that is known as magnetic reconnection. So we believe that even though it's the quiet sun and there are only very small scale magnetic fields, these field lines do get tangled and get under stress. And like rubber bands, they can eventually tear and uh, then reconfigure into new configurations. And that, that tearing process can release energy, vast quantities, and that would then heat the plasma locally to temperatures of more than a million degrees, which is what we see in any case in the EUI images. Uh, I understand that these campfires could be uh, involved in one, in one big uh, solar science mystery, and that is the heating of the corona. Can you explain what that is? Why is it a mystery and how the, these campfires could, could be connected to that? Mm. The fact that the sun's corona is so hot has really been a mystery for many, many years. Uh, it's a little counterintuitive because you would think if you have a body that's very hot at the center and relatively cool at the surface, it would be even cooler the further you go away. But on the contrary, for the sun, we have a hot core, a relatively cool surface of just about five and a half thousand degrees, surrounded by a super hot atmosphere of more than a million degrees. It's as if you would light a fire and as you move further away from the fire, it doesn't get cooler, but in fact, it really starts to burn you when you're really far away. So, so that is really the, uh, the peculiar thing about the sun's corona and the corona of other stars as well. Um, there have been multiple theories put forward to account for that, uh, including shock waves and other phenomena. Most of them, although, are related to changes in the sun's magnetic field. And there's a theory put forward by uh, a great US physicist, uh, Eugene Parker, after whom the uh, NASA Parker Solar Probe has been named, who conjectured that if you should have a vast number of tiny flares, so similar to the flares that we have observed on bigger scales, but just a lot smaller, uh, all the time in, in the sun, that might account for uh, an, an omnipresent heating me mechanism that could make the corona hot. So while we clearly do not know yet if what we see is in any way related to that theory, there is a possibility that what we see here are, let's say, the tiny uh, cousins of the solar flares that we already know, and they produce heat uh, on a very different scale, but because of their multitude, they could contribute significantly to heating the solar corona. Thank you very much. Holly, uh, the images that we are seeing here uh, just now, they're, as we said, only the first images. Uh, seeing them, what does it suggest uh, about the future potential of the solar orbit uh, mission? Yeah, I think most importantly, it demonstrates that we are going to be able to accomplish our solar uh, objectives of, of Solar Orbiter. Uh, we are very excited that everything is working. And it also confirms the importance of looking at different physical scales. If we've already made 
some discoveries and just the first light images, just imagine what we're going to find when we get closer to the sun and when we get out of the ecliptic. Very exciting. Uh, we mentioned before that one of the goals is to look at 